Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So here I am in Rome, and behind me you can see um, this obelisk um, um, of uh, Thutmose II. Um, so um, this was um, put up in the 15th century BC in Egypt at Amun Karnak, that's, that's in Upper Egypt, so beside the River Nile. But, um, well, the work was begun, it was it's dedicated to him, but the work was only finished by his, his grandson, Thutmose III, and Thutmose II, he died in 1425 BC. Um, so it was there for centuries, and it just tells you how mighty and advanced the Egyptians were, that they could, they could build such a thing. It was over 32 meters tall, full of weight, um, 455 tons. Um, anyway, and it's got, uh, it's got hieroglyphs engraved in it all the way up and down. Hieroglyph, of course, meaning sacred writing. Um, because they had three forms of writing, the Egyptians, and hieroglyphs were the most ornate, the most difficult to do, the slowest to do. Of course, very few people could read. Thing, and eventually that was, that was lost to remembrance, the art of reading those, till deciphered by um, Champollion with his Rosetta Stone uh, in the 1820s. So um, back, to, uh, back to this. Anyway, it was then uh, relocated from, from uh, Karnak to Alexandria on the Mediterranean coast of Egypt. I was there for a long time. Alexandria had become the capital of Egypt by then. And in the Roman era, um, it was uh, taken down and transported by the Emperor Constantine II and was put up at the Circus Maximus as the centerpiece um, thereof. Um, and then um, it, was his, it was his son um, who did that. Uh, um, and th then it was, it was Constantine II, supposedly, it was something to do with his father's, um, his father's fact, uh, conversion to Christianity. He was, a, he was a Christian, this is like the 4th century AD, and it has a cross at the top. Obviously that wasn't original there in ancient Egypt. Um, anyway, then, then it collapsed um, by, the, by the 15th century, and Pope Sixtus V decided that something ought to be done about it. So he was having um, Michelangelo do lots of excavations at the Old Forum, and uh, this is broken into three fragments, and bring them here, put, stick them back together, that's been quite a difficult job, you probably can't see on the screen, but I can make out where one of the fractures was, just over halfway up. Stick it back together. It's thought to be a little bit shorter than it was originally. I'm not sure if that's allowing for the pedestal, which is not original. Um, and uh, and then um, put it put in this place here. And now it incorrectly says that this is the place where um, Constantine the First was baptized. Constantine the First was baptized at Nicomedia shortly before his death. So reading it, uh, it says. Yeah, Constantine, by the, one by the cross by St. Sylvester, um, was baptized here in a glorious propagation of the cross. Um, and it's got various other inscriptions on it. I'm afraid I can't read the hieroglyphs. I'm no Egyptologist. And um, behind me is the um, uh, Archbasilica of St. John Lateran. So that's a cathedral church in Rome. I know we've got St. Peter's Basilica. Basilica means royal in, in ancient Greek. So just a very, so very important churches or cathedrals are called basilica, like the name Basil. Ba Basil or Vasily, any of those. Um, anyway, there's the, there's the Archvicar of Rome and he's based there, uh, as in the Pope is so busy running Catholicism throughout the world, there has to be someone who actually fulfill the Episcopal functions for Rome, and that's what he does, the, the Archvicar of Rome, who's, who's a cardinal. Um, and there's got more Latin inscriptions here about um, how the um, Emperor Constantine of Augustus saying he's respected, it's not to do with the month, the month is named after the man, Augustus, not the man after the month, as in the, the first Roman Emperor, Augustus. Uh, okay, so this, uh, with the, the obelisk was put here in the place of his father, for his uh, honor to, dedicated to his father, having come from Alexandria, where it lay 300 years. And I can't remember the, oh yes, it was uh, put here by ship. Um, okay, sailing by the sea uh, and on the Tiber, as in the river Tiber, that flows through Rome and the great something else, I can't really get it. Put in the Circus Maximus by the Senate and the people of Rome. Okay, dedicated to God. That's what the DD stands for. And it's even got the name of the architect who put it up. Dominicus Aontana, the architect, he erected it, so it says. So I was doing most of the speaking over that aside because, as you can see, the traffic is rather busy here, so it gets a bit noisy. The square we're on is Palazzo um, Piazza Gian Giovanni Paolo II. Secondo, sorry, John Paul, the, John Paul the, the, the second. Now, I don't want to give away my age, but the first time I visited here was my second birthday, Rome, not this precise location. And we could not see the Pope of Rome because he was in hospital. He'd been indisposed because the Turkish chap had seen fit to shoot him. But John Paul II survived well, for another 24 years. He, he 
later went and he absolved his would-be assassin. So look at this. The eagles here, the dragons complete with scales and wings. That's a rather scary fact. And then we've got the table tiara in the middle with the cross, keys one silver and gold. The keys of St. Peter, as in, so that's the, the, the symbol of the papacy. Right, the Petrine keys, because remember, oh, I should know which gospel it is, that um, St. Peter says, so sorry, Jesus Christ says to St. Peter, uh, Peter, you are the rock upon which I built my church. Peter, meaning rock, of course, like Petras in, in Greek, uh, so I petrified and so on, or Kephas sometimes. Um, and then, oh yeah, the two, the two, see the fountain, isn't that a nice touch? These, these, um, they're spitting out water, these two fish. Um, and the eagle above there. And obviously the, the fountain of sort of practical function, people didn't have flowing water in those days. Um, oh yeah, and then it says all that about uh, Pope Six, uh, Pope, Pope um, Sixtus V, Pontifex Maximus, as in chief bridge builder. That's a title which goes back to, back to ancient Rome, but that's a papal title as well. I suppose they needed some supernatural power to build bridges, a tricky thing to do on the mighty river Tiber. Um, and all the rest of it. Ah, after some great calamity, it was broken in the Circus Maximus, this thing. So, in the soil. Anyway, after a lot of work, they brought it into this place by um, great labor. Yes, translating it here in a pristine and, a pristine and accurate restoration. Well, almost and all the rest of it. So I always say I don't read things before I do these videos, but in this case, I must admit I have, okay? It's got it all there for you. Um, so saying about how, yeah, Constantine um, the Great Emperor um, of the Christian faith, vindicator and asserter of the faith, uh, brought this uh, obelisk here from Egypt, the Kingdom of Egypt, um, as a, well, like a gift to the soil, dedicated, I don't understand the rest. By the Nile, transferred to Alexandria, or from Alexandria, to the new Rome. And I don't really get the rest of it. Okay, so they, they, they decorated this monument. Because um, now the, the uh, popes lived in the, in the Lateran Palace here, which is um, adjoining um, this uh, um, Archbasilica of St. John Lateran for centuries, or for over a thousand years, before they moved to the other side of the River Tiber, the Trastevere area, and that's where the Vatican City is to this day. The other side of the Tiber, sometimes known as the Leonine City, because the Pope Leo had shifted them there, and it had its own um, city walls, some of which are extant to this day. So Lateran, pa Lateran Palace is important in itself. There, for example, there was an order of nun nuns, the Canonesses Regular of the Lateran, I don't know if they really exist, they, they exist in London, another, well they used to exist in London, I think they all died out there, um, and they were in France. And you see above the door here, you can see the papal tiara, again the cross keys which you'll see on the Vatican flag. The flag of the Vatican City is one of only two in the world which is square, that and the Swiss one, okay? Well, Swiss people are said to be decidedly square, isn't that a bit racialist? Okay, um, anything else? So this is extra territorial as it is still owned by the, the, the papal state. Um, it's not part of the Republic of Italy. Once you step in there, there are Italian soldiers right outside. Now, the Italian authorities helped the papacy. And for example, when that Turkish chap shot um, the papacy, yes, the Swiss Guard is there. I know they wear those red, um, blue, and yellow stripy uniforms um, and ceremonial things holding this halberd, these really long ax and um, spear type things as in you could, you could take a horseman off his horse with one of those. But do they also wear just suits and they act as bodyguards to prevent the Pope getting shot? Well, they failed at least once. Um, but uh, when they arrested that, they, the assassin, they'd have a prison to keep him in, the papal police, so they sent him to an Italian prison. Um, okay, uh, anything else you want to know about here? Well, obviously the Lateran Pact was signed in there, 1929, when um, they, the Pope was no longer going to be the prison of the Vatican, but the papacy would recognize the Italian state, the Italian state would um, declare Catholicism to be its state religion, allow um, uh, Christian theology to be taught by priests in all schools. The papacy would stay out of the church, would stay out of political affairs, and they would pay the church lots of compensation for their seized territories. So the Vatican state is a sovereign state recognized by Italy, and there are a number of extraterritorial territorial buildings like this one. So this is, anyway, but come back to this obelisk, it's one of eight Egyptian obelisks in Rome, and that's the, that's the uh, tallest one in, in, in the world that's still standing, Egyptian obelisks. There are other ones which are not standing. So there's, you know, there's one obelisk in, in, in um, uh, Paris, one in New York, and there's one in London. 
Italy's got eight. They return their Ethiopian one from the obelisk of Aksum, and there's some Roman ones here in Rome, as in the Romans actually built them, didn't just filch them from other countries. Well, that's enough from me. I'm George from Ireland, so please follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Book online lessons with me in history, politics, religious studies, French, law, um, anything in the humanities, really, English literature, English as a foreign language, um, uh, politics, citizenship, and get me to translate for you from French, Spanish, Italian, uh, Russian, Romanian, or German, especially legal documents. I will help you with your essay, your dissertation, and theses. And I also am a tour guide in Londinium. That's what the Romans would call it whenever tourism reopens. Right, toodaloo.